Yo, what's going on guys? So today I want to show you my build that I am using to farm simulacrums. So as of right now, this build is worth around 70 exalts. But this league, after the nerfs to everything, simulacrums are much much harder. So I am no longer able to farm them with this build on like 10, 20 exalt budget. And I was able to do that during previous leagues. And when I had around 30-40 exalts budget, I, would, I was able to complete some of them with wave 20 and some of them with only 19 waves. It would most of the time just depend on the mod. So yes, I would say it's pretty expensive build and you will need around 30 exalts to even think about starting doing it. There are probably a lot of other builds that you can use to farm simulacrums, but I really like this build because it doesn't require that many gems and you can also use Maloney with your main weapon uh, uh, setup and your second weapon setup, so you are leveling a lot of gems. Okay, so let's start with the links. So the only six link i need is toxic rain with mirage archer i prefer divergent because it also gives increased skill effect duration which applies to duration of toxic rain as well as mirage archer empower level four which is quite expensive right now a little bit less than 10 exalts i would say awakened void manipulation Anomalous Efficacy, because it also gives increased skill effect duration and Awakened Vicious Projectiles. You don't need quality because it only gives you increased physical damage. So for the other links, I am using for my movement skill setup Anomalous Second Wind for two additional cooldown uses of Blink Arrow and Dash. And I am also using Valgrace. I'm not using Grace itself, just Valgrace. So with Second Wind you will have much lower cooldown recovery, but I think having more charges is actually better because most of the time you will just have to use one dash, second one dash, third one, and then you will just stand in place and keep attacking. And in that time all of your charges will be restored and then you can move around again and in this time your charges will start recharging again. For defense I am using steel skin on my left click so when I'm moving steel skin is just being automatically applied from time to time and for my auras I'm using skitter bots and malevolence. So overall I have I think around 25 empty gem slots so I'm leveling up 25 gems so you can level up whatever you want I started with spectral shield throw because it's pretty meta and it was quite expensive but it's kind of annoying to click so many of them every single time you level them up you have to just spam click left clicking and leveling them so I don't really like leveling normal gems alternative is obviously empowers enlightened and awakened gems and which ones are the best to level up? It's up to you to check the prices and figure out what you want to level up. Okay, so let's look at the other items. I mean, well, let's look at the items. So first I am using this bow. And this bow I actually crafted recently and I will show you right now how can you craft it. Because it's actually deterministic mostly and you will need I think anywhere between 10 to 15 exalts to craft it and most of the uh, money cost comes from the uh, meta mods from the crafting bench just paying raw exalts from for the crafts so the price is pretty stable I would say so to craft it you will need 200 well you need a bow with 1.5 attack speed so either short bow um, grove bow or ticket bow so let's just choose ticket bow and you only need item level 82 so this would be your base and you would just spam alterations until you hit suffix 
with damage over time multi. So let's remove other mods. Let's do that. So you need tier one damage over time multi. And let's say you have the other mod. So if you have an item like this, you can either just go for YOLO Anul and if you fail, you just spam alterations again. But if, if you don't want to do that, you can go for beast crafting and craft the imprint beast. This way you annul and if you fail, you can always go back and you can imprint it again. And as you can see here, I am quite unlucky. So it was actually a good idea to do it. And eventually you will have item like this. And again, you would uh, again you would imprint second time, and you would regal it, and again annul until you have a rare item with damage over time multi. So the base six link should cost around three exalts, depending on the market and crafting this, depending on your luck with imprints and so on probably will cost you also around like one to maybe two exalts. Um, next step will be to go to your bench and craft can have up to three crafted modifiers and cannot roll attack modifiers. So you, the reason you need can have up to three crafted modifiers is just so you have all of your three suffixes blocked. And because you have cannot roll attack modifiers, when you use just a normal exalt you use on the item, you will always get plus one scattered ball gems. So as you can see here, I am always getting it. So you just use one exalt, and after this you use hunter exalt. And hunter exalt will guarantee to get chaos damage over time. But the tier is random, so you can get tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, or tier 1. So let's say you were, were lucky and you got tier 1 and with my bow I got the tier 2. So I guess I was decently lucky. Okay so after that you would remove crafted modifiers. So you go to your bench, you remove both of them and now you you will have to craft, can have up to three crafted modifiers again. So that's another two exalts. And now you would craft prefix plus two to level support gems, which also costs two exalts. And suffix, chaos damage over time multiplayer, which is here. And that's basically it. So that's my bow and overall to craft it you need two exalts for this mod, two exalts for this mod, um, one exalt to get uh, plus one, so two, four, five, hunter orb is three exalts, so that's eight. We previously had to put multi mod again, so that would be ten and cannot roll attack modifier, so it's one exalt, so that would be eleven. And for the base, if you pay like three exalts, that would be 14 exalt. And for crafting damage over time multi with beasts and so on, it's probably around one more exalt. So I would say it's around 15 exalts to craft this bow. And it's to get something better than it, it would be in probably in like tens of exalt. If anyone knows a better way to craft it, maybe cheaper, feel free to leave a comment. But as of right now, I haven't figured out a better way to craft a bow like I'm this. Not up to that just yet. So let's look at the other items. So for the helmet you only care about enchant and preferably on lion pelt for evasion. So you want enchant, toxic rain fires, additional arrow and just get some life, get some resistances. You can get the hunter mod minus nine to chaos res, but if you get that it will be much much harder to get some resistances and life and in my version of the build I really really struggled for life and resistances so I decided to not go for minus KSRS. 
I am also using two Unset Rings just for additional gems. If you don't have that much money, you don't have to go for Unset Rings, just go for normal ones. With one of, on one of them, I have Curse Enemies with the Sparrow hit. On second one, I don't have it, I just have some life, resistances, chaos resistances. And it's important to get the minus 8 to mana cost as a prefix, as a craft, to reduce cost of your Toxic Rain. And why is that? I am gonna talk about that in a second. Next item is gloves. So for gloves, you only care about chaos damage over time multiplier, which is hunter mod. Tier one is up to 16. And other than that, you just want some life and resistances. For boots, um, the most important mod is tailwind. And you also want to have free prefix. So you can craft movement speed and onslaught for four second on kill. Other than that, again, you just want some life and resistances. On your belt, you want Hunter Belt. And this belt, I remember, I bought for 7 exalts. It has tier 1 life and tier 1 percentage life, which is Hunter mod, and also two pretty big uh, resistances. So tier 3 and 4 Lightning and Cold. For Quiver, I'm using Maloney, just so I can level up 3 additional sockets. If you don't want to go for Maloney, you can just use a rare quiver with some life resistances and chaos damage over time multiplier to attacks and plus one arrow or just damage over time multiplier which will be pretty hard to craft but it's a really really good alternative if you don't care that much about sockets for the chest i'm using carcass jack and i actually bought corrupted one with percentage increased damage as a imprint so you don't really care about plus two gem levels on your chest like normally you, you would care on a corruption and you also don't care about six link on it because you will be six linking your uh, bow and you will socket your bows so this is why you don't care about plus two socketed gems and the last item which is the most important one in this build is Zerfi's heart so Zerfi's heart gives you the Soul Eater for 20 seconds when you use a Valskill. And Valskill of my choice is Valgrace, because with Valgrace I will have for um, 13 seconds I will have the Dodge Cap. So as of right now I have uh, 40 and 30 chance to dodge and with my Dodge Flask and with Valgrace I am actually Dodge Capped. And during these 20 seconds you will have the Soul Eater, and Soul Eater gives you, well, it is a buff that during that time of the buff, you every time you kill something, you will gain its soul, and that soul will give you, I believe, it's 5% attack and cast speed, and it stacks. So usually, during these 20 seconds, you can get up to like 100 stacks, which means you get up to 500% increased attack speed. So normally, I am attacking like 2.5 times per second and with enough uh, uh, stacks of the buff I am attacking like 10, 15, maybe even 20 times per second so it is a really really big boost of damage and it is important to time your Valgrace correctly so you get the most out of it and the reason this is so good is because Simulacrum Waves last 30 seconds so if you wait for the first 10 seconds and just attack normally and then you use uh, your Valgrave, you will have your uh, Soul Eater up for the rest of the wave. Or you can go for using it immediately and then you, you can use it second time in, during the middle of the wave. But for me it feels much better to use it only one but delay it a bit because the bosses usually spawn later, so you want to have it, it always active. And if you use it at the beginning, very often what, what happens is when the boss spawns, the souls and the buff fall off and you have to gain it again. And during that time you have to fight boss, so it's really hard to gain them. So I usually prefer to delay it a bit. And also usually the beginning of the wave is not that hard. Okay, let's look at the tree right now. So first let's look at the cluster jewels. So for the large I am using 
the Chaos ones with Touch of Cruelty, which gives me 10% more damage basically, and Hinder, which is also really nice defense mechanic. Second one, Wicked Paul for some additional damage, and Unholy Grace for even more damage. And second large is similar, but I also have unspeakable, unspeakable gifts instead of Unholy Grace because this is basically the explode mod. It's not really that big of a deal. I haven't noticed it helping that much, but it is pretty useful to have a little bit better clear of your waves. For my medium, I have Chaos Damage uh, over time with Eternal Suffering. So this way you don't really need your totem uh, for Wither Stacks. You will apply Wither Stacks yourself, but only up to five stacks. So it's not as great as Totem, but even with Totem you would not apply that many stacks during Simulacrum Waves because they, the monsters die pretty quick, so you don't really need the Totem. And this can actually help quite a lot with damage. Brush with Death for some Chaos Damage over time multi, and at the same time it gives you pretty nice recovery. Since you are killing so many monsters in Simulacrum, 1% life on kill is actually really, really big. For the... Second cluster jewel, medium one, I am using the Curse one with Evil Eye and Wish for Death. So Wish for Death will give you Cooling Strike, which is basically 10% more damage um, on enemies that are cursed, and basically everything will be cursed. And Evil Eye will give you 5% more damage, basically, and the enemies will be blinded when you attack them for the first time and you apply the Curse with your ring. So... This is actually pretty big because we are dodge build with Wind Dancer, so getting that guaranteed blind is a really big deal. So I would highly recommend getting that cluster jewel. And the last two cluster jewels I saved for last because I have one flask cluster jewel because I need spine co spike concoction for 10% additional flask effect. And for the second mod, I chose Nambig Elixir for 40% reduced effect of the curses. So with the Soul of Yugul, you get 60%, so I need 40% more, which I basically could get another um, Flask Cluster Jewel with another Nambig Elixir, but the Alchemist Genius does not stack if you have a second one. So there isn't really anything that great to put as the second Cluster Jewel mod, so... I actually decided to go for the Megalomaniac. So Megalomaniac is pretty useful for, I would say, actually ev almost every build. So this way I can get second numbling elixir on Megalomaniac and just some other random mods. And I just found on the trade the tempered arrowheads. But it doesn't really matter what you get here, you just want one numbing elixir and something else that is pretty useful. Just something that would give you percentage life, some chaos damage, damage over time multi, whatever, any of the other mods that you have. It just depends on what you will find on the trade. And I paid for this, I think, like two exalts. Okay, so for the Water Eye, I am using Damage Over Time Multiplier while affected by Malevolence. If I would go for the second one, the second mod, I would probably go for Vitality with Life on Heat or maybe something else, I'm not really sure. There isn't really anything that great except for the Malevolence damage over time multi. And on small jewels, I am using some resistances because I am actually very low on resists. I have fire only because of Dying Sun. Without Dying Sun, I have pretty much exact 75% resistances on all of my resistances, even Chaos. So I need some chaos, some resistances on my jewels, some percentage life, and chaos damage over time multi. And the same thing on the second one, and the third one. On my um, abyss jewel, I have just as high as possible life, chaos res, and lightning res. Usually, I would get go for the phasing on kill and blind chance to blind on hit but I get phasing from Quartz Flask and Blind from Maloney Mechanism, so if I didn't use Maloney Mechanism, I would go for Blind on Hit here. 
and the last jewel is Elegant Hubris. Well, actually not last, but the next jewel is Elegant Hubris, which I'm using to counter the Zerfis Harp negative mode, which is items and gems have 50% increased attribute requirements. With Caspiro, I am getting Supreme Ostentation, with, which removes attribute requirements, which is also pretty useful because not only it counters Zerfis Harp, but even without Zerfis Harp, this build kind of struggles with attributes, so you don't have to worry about attributes at all. And also, if you are leveling a lot of different gems, you don't have to worry about attributes on them also. So if I remove my Elegant Hubris, as you can see, I need quite a lot of attributes. And the last jewel is Thread of Hope, just so I can get overcharge for Power Frenzy and Endurance Chance on kill, which is actually very powerful. Some additional attack and cast speed, some life. Here I actually have chaos resistances. I did spend like 2000 chaos or something to roll my elegant hubris to be able to get chaos resistances here. For starter, uh, for starter version of this build, it doesn't really matter what you get here, but eventually you would want some kind of resistances or maybe percentage life, whatever. And here I took skill effect duration which is not only powerful for toxic rain but also for uh, val grace to increase its duration the last part of the build is the flasks so for the flasks first of all you want 50 percent increased flask effect because dying sun gives you two additional projectors and with 50 percent increased flask effect you get additional one, so you get three. So to to reach 50%, again, I am using spike concoction for 10%. From ascendancy, I believe you get 20, so that's 30. Here you have uh, another 20, so that's 40. And here another 20, so that's 50%. Alternative would be to go for uh, careful conservationist for 5% and you would also use conqueror's potency jewel for additional 8% and for the enchant on my amulet I am using growth and decay there are some other options but I believe this is the best one so uh, going back to the flasks again I am using dying sun for uh, additional projectiles with flask effectiveness. Um, I am using quartz flask with alchemist to increase its effect. So with uh, this mod and with the 50% overall increase effect of flasks, I am dodge card thanks to this flask. Um, next one is forbidden taste. So this is a pretty nice flask to use this league because of the enchant used when you take a savage hit. So this flask will reco recover you 80%, even up to 100% of your life on use. So whenever you take Savage Hit, which is 15% of your life, this flask will be used and you will instantly recover that life. So this is a really powerful mechanic. Basically, you have automated uh, protection from big hits. But in return, you will take 25% of your maximum life taken as chaos. So as you can see here, I take quite a lot of uh, life when this flask is active. So this is countered with Chaos Resistances. This is why it is really important to get Chaos Resistances on this build. Also Simulacrums overall require quite a lot of Chaos Res, but this basically means Chaos Resistances are the must-have for this build. Mm. Also, the reason why I take so much devil damage, even though I am max uh, Chaos Res cap, um, is because I am Pathfinder and I have that 50% increased flask effect, so it is actually for me 37% of maximum life taken as Chaos damage. So for this flask, this is actually a negative. So it's, uh, it is bad, but it's not that big of a deal. If you have your um, Caster Jewel, Brush with Death, you pretty much don't even feel that degen, you kill so much stuff, you will just regen the life instantly. Also, this is the dodge flask, so you might ask why I'm using two dodge flasks, and that's because this flask is pretty much almost never active. It is just active when I uh, 
take a salvage hit. So I really want to have a hundred percent uptime on this class. Also, I am using the enchants on both of them. Used when ch charges reach full, so I don't have to worry about pressing them. The only flask I am pretty much pressing is the mana flask and sometimes instant life flask. And on my instant life flask, I have bleeding immunity and instant recovery. On my mana flask I have enduring so that the flask is not uh, interrupted when a mana reach, reaches full and immunity for poison pretty much because there isn't really anything else that I could put here. Also on uh, I forgot to mention that on my quartz flask I also have the attack speed during flask effect which is also really powerful because of the flask effect. So with 50% and 25% here, I get probably around 20% increase attack speed, maybe a bit less, like 17, 18. So it is really, really powerful. Except for uh, all of the cluster jewels and just uh, normal jewels on the tree and flask effect, I just go for as much life as possible just some damage for both here, again life here, here, skill effect duration here, and Wind Dancer. So Wind Dancer is really powerful when you are using the dodge because uh, whenever you are hit, you will take 20% less damage and then you will just dodge few attacks and after 4 seconds you will again take less damage. So it is actually a really powerful defense mechanic for dodge based characters. So I think that's actually pretty much it. The last thing I forgot to mention is my ascendancy. So I'm going for Pathfinder. The reason for that is mostly because of the flasks and just how powerful they are in uh, simulacrums. I don't really like going for Raider and the mana flask and flask effectiveness is pretty much required if you are using the Zerfis heart because you will just lose so much mana. When you attack like 10, 15 attacks 15 times per second with Zerfis heart, you need a lot of uh, mana recovery. So um, mana flask with a lot of effectiveness is pretty good for that. And also this is why I have crafts on my rings with minus mana cost. Actually, I should recraft this for Seven per seven and not six. So, again, for as for ascendancy, I am using the nature's adrenaline, nature's reprisal just for some damage, nature's boon for flask charges, and master Al alchemist. So, you are basically immune to ailments. Your dying sun and quartz flask are just being pressed so often, pretty much any time you have any elemental ailment on you, they will be removed and also from time to time just press your mana flask and life flask so they are just being constantly removed and ailment immunity is really big for simulacrums because not only monsters, monsters apply normal ailments like shock, freeze and ignite but also they have three different ones which are scorch, brittle and sap and all of them are pretty gen dangerous so you really really want some kind of uh, immunity to ailments. So this is like a pseudo immunity, but it's good enough. So if you would want to know how I did progress this build, so like leveling, what did I uh, wear earlier, you can check out my previous videos. I have like, I think four or five videos when I was progressing this build, just basically they are titled, uh, they will 1 and 2 of the league, day 3 and 4 of the league and so on, so over there I am explaining my overall progression of the build. So that's pretty much it, I don't think I will upgrade this build anymore, I don't think there is anything that I, act I actually can upgrade, maybe except for a better watcher eye, gain some more levels and just more life on gear and minus resistance minus chaos resistances helmet and that would be pretty much it so i'm gonna just keep it like that for now and just farm simulacrums with it so with this version like 70 exalts 80 exalts budget i have not failed a single wave 20 or just overall simulacrums so far i am still dying 
I am not gonna lie. Simulacrums are still pretty hard. From time to time, I am still dying, especially if the last wave has mine has uh, the mod that the monsters have forty percent chaos resistances. This is the hardest uh, mod for this build. So, if you get that and you are failing the wave, just don't feel sorry for you. It is pretty hard wave. So. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.